Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, I reviewed the Rolls Royce Wraith. and $40,000. While I absolutely love the car, there are some problems with it, and that is what I'm going to talk about today. Can't get over this feature. If you try to steal the spirit of ecstasy, <laughs> it drops down out of the way. So I just put my V-Box in the Wraith, which is probably one of the few times somebody has put an acceleration measuring instrument inside of a Rolls Royce. I'm curious how fast it'll do 60 miles an hour. Now, claim speed, 4.4 seconds. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see, it just started raining. I think this is the third day in eight months since I moved to Southern California that it's actually rained. So maybe we'll see how fast it can hit 60 miles an hour in the rain. Well, I don't have to close the door myself. I'll just click this button here. Check out how fancy even the cigarette lighter is. Move this backwards and look at the... <laughs> look how beautiful this is. This is just the cover for the cigarette lighter, which I'm not going to use for a cigarette, but instead to power my V-Box. I'm actually curious to see what the rain noise is like when driving a Rolls Royce Wraith. A lot of cars is really insulated from wind noise as well as tire noise, but I've noticed that raindrops, depending upon the materials used in the roof, can be super, super loud and intrusive. Go ahead and fire it up. Just turned on the heads up display. I don't know if you can see that too well on the camera. It shows the speed limit as well as how fast I'm going. I will say the backup camera graphics are fantastic. We've got different viewing modes as well. Just notice my spirit of ecstasy is down from when somebody attempted to steal it. What shall I do? Well, click here on spirit of ecstasy and raise it upwards. This is absolutely the quietest car I have ever driven in the rain. The only indication that it's actually raining is the tiniest little noises coming from the front windshield. I wonder if they could put a thicker sheet of glass to reduce that noise a little bit, but we're nitpicking here. Wow, the parking sensors do not like the rain. Check out how obscured the camera view is now. Look at all those random green spots all over. When I was filling up, a nice subscriber came up in a Range Rover that he straight piped. It sounds so good, and I just noticed. Check out the image it has when filling up gas. It's an old air-cooled 911. This part never gets old. Well, actually, it does. More on that later. Just stumbled upon Kate ahead of me in that matte green M2. Damn, that thing sounds good. Armatrix exhaust, I believe. Okay, well, it's raining harder and harder, so I guess we'll see, instead of how fast the Rolls-Royce Wraith hits 60 miles an hour, how slow it hits 60 miles an hour, because 624 horsepower rear-wheel drive is not really the combination for setting a fast acceleration time in the rain. The car isn't the best in the rain, however. The tiniest amount of throttle, and it spins the tires if you're going around a curve. It really doesn't have any sort of traction whatsoever. Now the traction control system keeps you safe, but it cuts power severely. Long straightaway, Rolls Royce Wraith, V-Box, rain, what could possibly go wrong? Okay, before I actually launch the car, I want you guys to take guesses in the comment section below how many seconds you think this car is gonna take to hit 60 miles an hour. I'm not gonna brake launch it or anything, just mash the gas and go. It is raining outside. I'm gonna leave traction control on because if I turn it off, which maybe I'll do in a little bit, it's just gonna do one big burnout and probably never reach 60 miles an hour. Let's see how this goes. My guess, six seconds. All right, complete stop, ready, set, go. Traction's kicking in. Wow, 5.5 seconds in the pouring rain? That's actually not bad. All right, one more try. Let's see how it goes. Oh, traction majorly kicked in this time. Yeah, 6.1 seconds, worse than before for sure. These pockets absolutely kill it as a vlog holder. Also, shout out to Carpage once again for providing this Wraith. Thanks, dude. Backup camera has almost completely fogged up at this point. That's pretty annoying. The acceleration test provided a perfect example of another problem with the Rolls-Royce Wraith, and that is that it only comes in rear-wheel drive form. Something like a Mercedes S63 AMG, all-wheel drive. A Bentley Continental GT W12 all-wheel drive. It's practical every day, even if it's raining or snowing. Now, some people could argue, if it's snowing, don't take your damn Rolls-Royce Wraith. 
but this is such a good and capable daily driver that you truly could drive it if it was all wheel drive and you had winter tires in the snow, no problem. Safety is obviously a huge part in the luxury experience. You can't feel relaxed and comfortable if you're worried about dying the entire time. Now for most of the clients in sunny Southern California, this isn't an issue whatsoever. If it's raining, take another vehicle, or well, the fact that it just doesn't rain in Southern California other than right now while I'm driving a $340,000 car. But for those in other states who want to experience their Rolls Royce year round, I mean, when you're spending that kind of money, it's nice to be able to take it out whenever it is you want. It would be nice to have an all-wheel drive option. Now, there have been test mules spotted with a new all-wheel drive platform, so it'll be interesting to see if that ever trickles down into the next generation of Rolls-Royce Wraiths and Ghosts. You know what else is over 620 horsepower in rear-wheel drive? The previous generation ZR1, and that certainly doesn't scream safe to me. Next up is the headliner. Nowadays, it's very common for a car to come standard or at least have a cheap option for a sunroof. In the Wraith, I love the Starry Night headliner. It makes, well, this black void look a bit cooler, but it'll set you back $14,700 and you don't actually get to see the real sky. The sunroof option on the Wraith costs $8,900. Yes, you've got plenty of room, headroom, space on the side, but because you don't have any sunlight coming in from above, it feels more cramped than it should. Seriously, a sunroof for $8,900? Not a fan of that. The only other options problem I have on the Wraith is the cooled seats. A Hyundai Sonata Limited, $33,000 car, comes standard with ventilated seats. A $320,000 base price Rolls Royce Wraith does not. How much will the cooled seats cost you? $2,650. And they aren't any sort of special cooled seats. In fact, they don't work any better than any other vehicle I've been in. But you've got to pay $2,600 for a standalone ventilated seat option. At well over $300,000, you'd think they'd have some money to just toss that in for free. If it's included in a car that costs 10 times less. Here is my least favorite part about Rolls Royces in general. They don't offer any sort of autonomous driving aids. Rolls-Royce claims that current day autonomous driving technology is not up to par with what Rolls-Royce wants, which means whether you're spending $300,000 on a Wraith or $600,000 on a new Phantom, the steering wheel will not move for you to keep you within the lanes on the freeway. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, autonomous driving aids have become a huge part in a luxurious driving experience. Having put over 20,000 miles on my Mercedes S-Class, Every single time I drive on the highway, I activate what Mercedes calls Distronic Plus. You pull back on a lever and the car steers itself within the lanes on the highway. Every 10 seconds or so, you just have to give it a little graze on the steering wheel, but it allows you to fully relax. And if you wanna keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times, you really just have to rest them there and the car gently glides you around turns. It works really well. Tesla system is a little bit better than this and even comes standard on a $35,000 Tesla Model 3. Now on a Rolls Royce Phantom, I get it. You don't need self-driving technology when you're gonna be sitting in the back. You've got your driver for that. But on a Ghost or a Wraith where many people lease them and drive them themselves, it doesn't make any sense not to have this. The crazy part is we have it on the new 7 Series. They've got steering and lane assist. So why not trickle that technology into the Wraith. Now, Teslas are actually capable of doing so. They've got the technology to be fully autonomous. They've just been restricted for safety reasons. But there's nothing more luxurious than being able to look out at the scenery, keep your hands just lightly on the wheel as it drives itself on the highway. After owning a car with semi-autonomous capabilities, I don't think I could own a luxury car without it. It's actually such a nice feature to have that when you hop into a car that can't drive itself, that of course isn't a sports car, you don't want a GT3 RS that can drive itself, but something like this, it's pretty disappointing. So I pulled over to the side of the road to check something and it brings me in a perfect situation to show you one of the things I hate the most about the Rolls-Royce Wraith. Now, 
The doors are incredible. It's so cool that you close the doors using a button. But what happens if you need to close the doors quickly? Let's say it's raining outside like it is right now. In a normal door, you simply pull on it for a second and momentum will carry it shut. In this, the door is too far away to do that. But what happens also if you're on a hill? Because the doors are heavy, that's more strain on the motors and thus the doors close even slower. It's raining right now. I'm trying to close it so it doesn't get on my leather. Door closing power assist deactivated. Ah! Because I was on a hill, the door was actually too heavy for the motors to close it. And then I was stuck basically having to lean out of the car in order to close the door so that I didn't get the leather wet, which unfortunately I did. So now I'm going to have to clean that off. But it's not just when you're on a hill and the door mechanism doesn't decide to work. It's in general, it takes a long time for the door to close. And because you have to press and hold the door mechanism, you're stuck wasting time with your arm up by the A-pillar pressing a button, which honestly takes more effort than just closing the door yourself, which unfortunately, because of the way it's designed, is pretty impossible to do. I guess that's why if you drive a ghost or a phantom, you have your butler do it for you. All right, here is another issue with the Wraith, and that is parking. At six feet, 4.8 inches wide, finding a parking spot for the Wraith is quite difficult. You see, there was a spot much closer to where I was trying to go up there, but I felt like it was too narrow for the Wraith. A more normal luxury car, it would fit just fine. The confusing part is, in a car this big, that's exactly when you would want all of the self-parking features that BMW, Mercedes, Tesla, Audi all have. Those cars can parallel park themselves. Some can perpendicular park themselves. This one can't do any of that. Thankfully, the Rolls-Royce does come with an umbrella, but I'd rather just park closer to my destination. All right, back in the car, gonna click the button. One, two, three, four. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this car, but no car is perfect. So I wanna point out some of the flaws and let you guys know that even when you're spending over a quarter of a million dollars on a car, no car is perfect. The 18 speaker sound system in the Wraith is unflippin' believable. One of the best sound systems I've ever experienced, seriously. Go ahead and show me how you go down. Visibility for changing lanes in this thing is actually incredibly good. That cool looking curved road off the side of the freeway there was actually where I did the Rolls Royce Dawn review many months back right when I moved to California. Well, tragically, it's time to give this car back. I've had such a blast with it over the last two days. And honestly, <laughs> it's one of the blessings and the curses with this job, right? I get to drive all these incredible cars. And then I remember, wait, I. I don't own this. I've got to give it back. I don't want to. Thank you so much. Yeah, Nick. man, this was freaking yeah. awesome. You've had this for what, four months now? Yeah, four months. And loving it? Absolutely love it. Yeah, okay. I mean, I had it for two days and absolutely fell in love. I drove that from him a couple months ago. You've got a cool setup, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Ah, back in the S-Class, don't worry Ariana, I still absolutely love you. Interesting though, what I was talking about earlier about how the rain makes noise on the roof, the S-Class definitely has some of that noise. Ooh, imagine how much dual sunroofs on a Wraith would cost. That's not an option, but they'd probably charge you a lot for it. Bro, what is a CC63 AMG? No! Beautiful new C-Class Cabriolet ruined by some awkward badging. Actually though, what the hell is that, dude? Okay, we need to start a movement. We have to stop this madness. Anytime you see someone with a fake badged car and it's safe to do so, tell them, dude, your car was cool to begin with. There's no reason to put a fake badge on it. Anybody who knows what an AMG is, is gonna realize that that's not a C63 AMG. Also a CC63 AMG? What is it, a, a Passat? Was a Volkswagen CC? We're not quite sure. Loving all the posts on my app like gravity, guys. Seriously, it means the world to see all of the interaction between all of you fans. I wanted to give a special shout out to AB17 for having one of the top posts so far. All right, this license plate that says the CEO on a Lexus GS might be worse than a fake M badge. What is the point of that? Is it, am I supposed to be impressed that you're the CEO? The CEO of what? I'm putting it on a Lexus GS, like maybe a Rolls Royce Phantom, but even still, then you look like a total douche. 
Yeah, just don't have a license plate like that. Just remember guys, always be huppy. Just got back home, it is still pouring rain. Funny enough, I actually just got this emergency alert on my phone that said, if you're in an area that recently had a fire, stay alert because we might be evacuating. I'm like a little bit worried about that. I'm not sure if they're referring to air quality issues or what, but the sky looks super ominous right now. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. And if you haven't yet gotten yourself a vehicle version sweatshirt, I guarantee you this is the softest feeling sweatshirt that you'll ever buy. Have a good one, guys. Peace.